If you're having foaming issues with your kegerator and using couplers like this, then this one little washer right here could be your problem. Before we dive too deep into that, let's go into what actually goes into making your beer too foamy, if it's on a kegerator, any sort of draft system. And we've gone into this in depth in these videos that are around here, or if they're not there, then they're probably down below in the description. But let's uh, talk about what actually can cause the foaming issue. The most common thing can just be your beer is overcarbonated. So if it comes from a place that you bought the beer from, then sometimes the beer can kick up fermentation in the keg. It can make more carbonation happen in the keg. And sometimes you receive an overcarbonated beer that is going to take some troubleshooting to not come out foamy from your tap system. If uh, that's not the issue, there is a lot that can go into line balancing, basically meaning that your beer is properly carbonated, but it's hitting the back of your faucet too fast. Uh, the One of the videos, the very first video we did on draft systems talks about line balancing and how to make sure that there is the proper resistance in your line to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, the third, and I would say in the home built kegerator world, the most common thing that causes foaming is gas breakout or some sort of a gas leak. Now gas breakout can come from particles being in your line. Let's say your lines are dirty and those are nucleation sites where gas can break out while it's in the line causing pockets. And so if you're pouring your beer and you get a start to get a smooth stream of beer and then you get a bubbly stream and then it goes back to smooth, that could be gas breakout. The other thing it could be is a gas leak. Now a gas leak can come from the back of the faucet where the line attaches to wherever your faucet is attached to. Um, if that is not properly sealed, gas can get in there and that can cause more foaming right at the beginning of your pour. So if it starts pouring like that and then goes into a normal stream, that could be the issue. Gas breakout uh, or a gas leak can also happen from your seal here um, uh, where the line is coming off of your kegerator. Um, that is one thing that if that's not properly sealed, same thing happens, a little bit of oxygen, natural air gets into the line and causes gas breakout, and that will give you a little sputter. But one thing that I don't see a lot of people talking about, which can be impacted by what coupler you buy. Now these are all D-system couplers, but of varying qualities is the potential for this probe seal washer to be the issue. So this seal right here, which is a tiny little seal that is what plunges down uh, on the probe that plunges down into the spear of your keg, that separates where liquid goes into your line from where CO2 gas goes into the keg. Now, cheaper regulators like this one often have a tinier probe seal washer, and sometimes the plunging mechanism isn't as sturdy. These also can sometimes not grab onto the keg when you spin them around as much, meaning they canter or they, uh, they tilt a little bit as they spin down. So if that probe seal isn't very flush because of the tilt or it's not very big and creating a full seal, what happens is that the CO2 that's meant to go into the keg can also sometimes go straight into your beer line that's coming out towards your faucet. Now, what that'll look like if you're pouring is similar to gas breakout where you have an, an initial sputter, a before most, most of the time, if it's not a very bad leak, it will run fairly clean, very fairly clear. But if it is a bad leak, especially if you have your entire coupler tilting, sometimes that can continue to let gas in while the beer is exiting the keg, and that creates a long stream of foam that makes your beer continuously foaming, even if the beer in the keg is not overcarbonated. Now, how do you fix that? If you've got a bad wash or a bad coupler or a cheap coupler and you don't want to buy a whole new one, they actually do make um, thicker washers that you can use these for. The combination of a thicker washer and just making sure you know that it's possible for this to tilt as you sit it down can sometimes help you fix the problem by yourself without having to buy new equipment. But if this is something you've experienced before and you don't want to deal with it, you can just go with a coupler that has a stronger set uh, probe and or a thicker washer. Uh, if you've got any more questions on this and you want to learn how to uh, do more line balancing stuff, comment below what you've got for us. If you want to learn how to deal with an overcarbonated keg and how to make sure that you can get that back to the right carbonation, that's a longer process. And we're actually doing that right now with one of the beers that we made. Uh, so comment below, uh, hit like, subscribe, all that, follow us on Instagram. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. That's pretty much all I got. And then merch. And then you do, no, I don't do merch. You do merch. You're, you do merch. The people that, not, not Harry who's behind the camp, but the people that are, that I'm looking at right now, they do the, cause it's on our website, on our website and sometimes even below the video. They should, you should check that out. We've got some cool stuff.